Mayor, Representative Williams referenced behind the scenes meetings. My understanding is there's some, you know, some alternative concepts presented to you by the union. Uh, where, where, where do you stand with that? I and mean, how, how close do you think to a uh, deal being, being reached here that everyone can support? Well, uh, about a half an hour before uh, I got my car to come down to Columbus uh, yesterday, I was presented with a document that uh, outlined some some proposal by, I guess, uh, some of the delegates and the teachers union. Uh, I have people looking at it now and to see where in those documents we believe there's opportunity to develop some consensus. Uh, if uh, uh, once we do, then we'll ask for the detail of, of what they're talking about. And if those things we can agree upon, then we're perfectly uh, willing to uh, include that in whatever we're doing. But let me be clear that uh, uh, this is our proposal. If somebody has a better way to skin this cat, then I'm glad to accept that. What we will not accept is this incremental change and, and everything is okay and, and maybe wait until next year. That is not acceptable. But if there is something that uh, anybody, whether it's the Teachers Union, the House, the Senate, Democrats, Republicans, Charters, Public, whoever it may be, that can bring something to the table that gets us to this outcome in a better way than I'm proposing, I'm, I'm happy, happy for that. Mayor Jackson? Yes. Just to be clear, you don't have any sponsors yet, is that correct? Uh, I would not say that, but uh, what, I, what I will say is that our intent is to have uh, legislation introduced relatively soon, which will require responses. And how soon do you hope to do that, then? Uh, I think that what is the process on the drafting? I mean, there's a way, I think there may be a few days sometime next week. And how critical is it to have the Cleveland Teachers Union support if we're talking about a levy in the fall? Well, I don't know about if, how much that is associated with uh, levy, uh, as, as much as it is associated with us producing a plan that the people can have as a, a tool that they can be confident in to pass a levy. So that's uh, why we're willing to work with people to get there. Uh, but uh, all in all, without uh, this plan going forward and having the substantive things intact, uh, there's no possibility to pass a levy because people will not uh, be willing to put money into the same old thing again and again. Uh, what people want is for us to demonstrate that we have the courage and the commitment uh, to make systemic changes to address systemic problems. And they don't want to hear about whether or not you're Democrat or Republican, or if you're friendly to a union or you're not. They, they don't want to hear that. Uh, what they want to know is how are you going to get us an educated child, how are you going to get that happen now? Not next year or year down the road. Mayor, as legislative members, is it your intention to shield the Transformation Alliance from uh, public record laws and uh, sunshine laws? Well, sir, I don't shield anybody from anything. I, I, what I will tell you is that as we look at uh, comments that in regards to uh, whatever we propose, one of the major things that came out was that both from the Democrats and Republicans, from the media and everyone, was uh, some concern about the transparency and accountability of the lines. So I asked uh, our uh, attorneys to go back to address those issues. I got a, a proposal back yesterday morning that did not fully address it in the way that I believe was satisfactory. So I told them to take another shot at it. Uh, and so at the end of the day, uh, there will be something that I believe that addresses legitimate concerns that uh, people have on that. But as the superintendent has said constantly, there is no intent not to be transparent. There's no intent not to be accountable. What there was an intent to do was to set up an organization that could help hold us accountable in regards to this uh, plan that we um, let, let me add to that a little bit further. Um, as I alluded to when I, in my prepared remarks, um, we are just now getting the first draft of, of the language.
language um, back. Um, there are a number of issues, and you have just touched on one of them, that some of the legislators have already raised concern with, as the mayor indicated. Um, let me just describe a little bit about the process as we move forward here. Starting this Friday, we are going to be having meetings all day long up in Cleveland. Uh, we've invited all members of both the House and Senate to attend. We expect probably most of them will be from the North and East, um, although we're welcome to, we'd be happy to take people from the farthest southern western corner that, if they want to make the drive. Um, but we will be meeting up there uh, on Friday. We, will, we have invited a couple of national experts on education issues. Um, Mike Casserly, who is the executive director of the Council on Great City Schools, will be joining us, as will John Luchak, who is um, a staff member with Education First Consulting and was very active in Illinois in developing the um, education plan that was passed in Illinois uh, last year. We will be also meeting on Friday with members of the CTU to go over some of their proposals, to hear what they have to say, and generally giving members of the legislature a chance to really dialogue on this issue. This, is, this will be the first of a series of events, um, some open to the public, some that will be legislative discussions only. Um, and in a process that we promise to be very open and transparent, thorough, and uh, we think will lead to an excellent plan at the end of the day. So uh, some of these smaller issues about different points of discussion um, probably are really best held off until we've had a chance to have those kind of um, thorough review of, of the pending legislation. Is Friday's meeting goes to um, the side of yeah. <laughs> interested parties. So is there any lawmaker that's here right now that is prepared to say that they'll reduce uh, Mr. Jackson's plan as is? I think I can stand here and tell you that it's my intention, yes. Let me uh, add a little bit to that. I think the process that we're engaging in today with the four of us standing here is to engage now the rest of the General Assembly to join us in the process that we usually engage in, that is, it's time for co-sponsors to sign up. And we don't have a bill that's uh, complete, but we think that we may have a, a bill that could be a starting point uh, in the legislative process very soon. I would say within days, but I'm an optimist and I believe we need optimism uh, along with courage uh, in this process. So I, I think the stage we're going into now is the, the reaching out to the members bring co-sponsors across the line to stand with us in moving this legislation into the first phase, which is introduction, very soon. Representative William, but I think you said you agreed with maybe 70% of the plan or so. Can you describe some of the areas you have concerns with? Uh, the areas that I have concern with include the Transformation Alliance, um, the concerns about the labor union fresh start, um, just making sure we identify exactly what that means. Um, we want to get some clarification on the uh, changing of the local performing schools and how that would work. Um, so most of them center around um, the collective bargaining uh, process. Um, as many of you know, I introduced a bill dealing with parental involvement. I believe that if we're going to hold teachers accountable, we want to hold legislative leaders accountable, the mayor, and the CEO, we need to also hold parents accountable. At this time, if you go to a school meeting, you might have six teachers show up. One teacher told me that she sent out a, a notice for a meeting out of 100 kids. She had three parents who showed up for that meeting. That's a shame. And that might be uh, one of the problems that we, have, that we have that our kids are not learning. Uh, so those are uh, just some of the things that we need to work on. Thank you. What do you say to the folks who are concerned about this and Senate Bill 5, some of the elements of Senate Bill 5 that might be in here? Well, um, I'd say that they shouldn't be concerned. Uh, basically, I was a strong um, uh, opponent of Senate Bill 5. I actually worked for the repeal of Senate Bill 5. Uh, at the same time, if you remember uh, last year when the uh, budget was being uh, worked through the House and the Senate, I sent a letter to uh, the Senate President, the Speaker of the House, and the Governor 
uh, asking them for some legislative reform, uh, which is included also in this more comprehensive plan. So I'm not conflicted. I don't have that issue. Uh, I believe I've been pretty clear on those things that, that I think we need to do in Cleveland around education and that I am uh, opposed to anything that eliminates collective bargaining. But I'm also opposed to collective bargaining standing in the way of educating children. So I don't, I, their concerns are their concerns, they're not mine. All right, thank you. Thank you.